Good morning. I'm Dr. David Cave, and I'm here with my colleague, Dr. Christopher Marshall, to discuss the paper, Timing of Video Capsule Endoscopy Relative to Overt Obscure GI Bleeding, Implications from a Retrospective Study that is associated with this video. I'm going to provide an introduction and rationale for the study, then Dr. Marshall will describe the paper. And lastly, I will discuss what might be done in the future with ideas with capsule endoscopy if one removes the constraints of limiting its use to obscure GI bleeding. It has been known for almost 10 years that if a video capsule endoscopy is performed early, the more likely you are to find active bleeding. Panazio and his colleagues in Milan made this observation in 2004. They noted that in what they call Group A, where capsule endoscopy was performed within 24 hours of admission, the diagnostic yield of active bleeding was 92%. This observation has not been extended to its logical conclusion. Over the last decade, there has been very little expansion of the use of video capsule endoscopy for detecting other types of GI bleeding. There is a common requirement by many insurance companies that it is necessary to perform a regular upper endoscopy and colonoscopy. And then if that does not reveal the source of bleeding, a capsule endoscopy may be considered, usually as an outpatient. By this time, it's very likely that any active bleeding will have ceased. And although there may still be a smoking gun with an ulcer, angioectasia, or other lesion that can be inferred to be the source of the bleeding, it is clearly much more satisfactory if active bleeding can be associated with a particular lesion to minimize diagnostic uncertainty and provide a convincing target for therapy. So, with these thoughts in mind and the fact that we have been aggressively using video capsule in inpatients, we look back at our data on overt obscure bleeding in several different ways. I will now hand over to Dr. Marshall, who will describe the aims and the design of the study. Our primary aim was to look at the diagnostic yield and therapeutic intervention rate in patients who had overt obscure GI bleeding. We did this by looking retrospectively at our patient population in whom we had performed a capsule endoscopy for this indication, either within three days or after three days from admission. We used outpatients who had a video capsule done for obscure overt bleeding as the control group. As we began collecting data, we realized that there was a significant impact on the length of stay, so we added this as an additional secondary aim. We have demonstrated in our paper that the longer one waits to place the capsule in patients with obscure bleeding, the lower the yield of the test and the lower the number of successful therapeutic procedures. As you can see, the yield is much lower in patients who have had the capsule placed after three days of admission. If one looks at the active bleeding group, the yield when the capsule is performed in less than three days is twice that than if one were to wait. The yield is 50% greater in the early capsule group when one looks at the findings of active bleeding or angioctasia. In fact, after three days, the yield approaches that of an outpatient procedure for all significant findings. This decreased yield translates into a significant decrease in therapeutic intervention. If the capsule is placed early, the rate of successful therapeutic intervention more than doubles. Again, if the capsule is performed after three days, successful intervention is similar to that as outpatients. We found that when one performs a video capsule endoscopy early in the patient's hospital stay, the length of stay is decreased by about four days. These observations make sense for several reasons. In some patients with obscure bleeding, there may be one or more potential causes for bleeding on any given study. If the study is done early enough, the detection and recording of the active bleeding site allows for better planning of therapeutic intervention. Even if a site is not seen actively bleeding, stigmata of recent bleeding may be present when the capsule is done early. If one waits too long, bleeding stops, stigmata disappear, and it can be difficult to determine from what and from where the patient may have bled. I will now let Dr. Cave provide some additional comments on future directions. Dr. Marshall has concisely described the study. The take-home points are that in this difficult-to-manage population, we were able to significantly impact the diagnostic and therapeutic intervention rate for patients with overt, obscure GI bleeding with this aggressive and unconventional approach. This, in turn, points to a new approach to the bigger problem of the way non-hematemesis GI bleeding 
is currently managed by gastroenterologists who have been employing the same strategies for GI bleeding for the last 40 years. And we think there is room for improvement. There is data to suggest that the diagnostic yield for colonoscopy in the setting of melanoma or hematochesia is as low as 13%. Now, since melanoma and hematochesia have little localization value, it is a judgment call at best as to whether to perform another endoscopy or colonoscopy as the first diagnostic test using this conventional management. Thus, we would like to argue that the very early use of video capsule endoscopy as the first diagnostic test for patients coming in with hematochesia or melanoma who are stable or at least easily stabilized might have a video capsule deployed in the emergency department. While the patient is waiting for a hospital bed, data is accumulating. Within eight hours of arrival in the emergency room and allowing a few minutes for video to download and to be interpreted, it is possible to arrive at a diagnosis as to the site of bleeding and its severity and then plan for therapy if it is needed. Furthermore, if no bleeding is seen in the stomach, small bowel, or right side of the colon, and there is no rectal bleeding, then it may be possible for the patient to be discharged after a few hours of observation. Further workup of the remaining colon can be done as an outpatient. We look forward to seeing a lot more studies employing the video capsule in a much broader setting, outside the constraints of limitations of using it in the context of obscured GI bleeding including it as a primary tool to define and to detect the source of bleeding in a much broader context. We hope that this discussion has been helpful and may open doors into much more efficient utilization of our resources at a time when cost containment has become a major issue. If indeed the capsule can be shown to reduce length of stay, its cost is more than offset by reducing length of stay even by a few hours.